reports say the longest escarpment in West Africa can be found at Nangpanduri in the newly created northeast region of Ghana. It is a source of pride of the Bimoma ethnic group in the north on whose land the natural landscape is located. In a region which lags behind in development, the people hope the environs of the landmark and region as a whole is developed to promote tourism. Napoleon Atikito reports. The past conflict situation of Nakban Duri has served as a fake veil on some of the beautiful things in the environs of this northern Ghana town. An escarpment believed to be the longest in the West Africa sub-region can be found at Nakban Duri in the newly created northeast region. It stretches about 15 kilometers on ground and it is of good height. The tip ends as waterfall which is seasonal due to arid conditions. The topography awakens reminiscence about the Kweu Mountains which are the scene for easterly paragliding recreation. The delectable site at Ebri, where part of a rocky slope has been excavated to make way for enhanced road construction, is a miniature of what exists at Nakbanduri. The escarpment in the north, which appears to be out of the radar now, was identified in the immediate post-independence period as a base for presidential retreat and for touristic purposes. Ghana's first leader, Osajibu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, put in place the accessories for this natural landscape for touristic purposes, for which reason he put Ghana under a tight microscope to have a clearer view of the landmass for specific development. That this facility is in the state that it is now in the state of abeyance shows that posterity is failing to build the superstructure of the foundation that he set. This scene explains how Dr. Kwame Nkrumah designed the surroundings of the scarf, placing stones to elevate the position from where he was to take a panoramic view of the environment. And you can see that this has stopped coming up. And you can see when you come, you are expected to you come, you go this way and climb. At least at the higher point that you can see that. So it was just like we wanted him to come past here. He planned to sit on this stone to be flanked by traditional chiefs of the north. There's a hole here. This is where now you call it white, but in those days we call it the So this is where he was supposed to put his between. And you can see the design as it's coming uh, it's here. So for us, our preparation was that we wanted to enskin him. He will come and sit like this, get elders to sit like we are sitting. He would have a place for the calabas, which is what I have just shown you, so that at the end of the day, we can take him in there to rest. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah built this guest house for lodging by dignitaries who may visit the site. Reports say he was on a three-leg tour of the northern part of the country, which was to end on the scarf when a bomb attack on him at Kulungugu interrupted the itinerary. From 1960, when this place was identified for development to be a tourist hub, eyes have been off the facility when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah left the scene in 1966. The items found in the guest house were all fittings done on his orders. They are now in shambles. Immobile traditional rulers wanting to revitalize the economy of northern Ghana are not oblivious of this wonderful site. Thus, they are proposing to the state and investors to cultivate the place for tourism and increased economic activity. The chief of Pipira, Naba Dazuri, explained that knowing how close the residency and escarpment was to the border with Togo and security implications, Dr. Nkrumah also built houses around the guest house to be occupied by regular security. The traditional rulers at the time, mindful of the very important personality who was to make visitations to the scarp, planted a sacred tree known in Dumoba language as Beg. 
Foglos states that the pet tree has powers to ward off enemies. The new overland, this tree is very significant. If you are going to settle in a place that you think that there are a lot of enemies that might attack you in the night, in those days that I'm talking about, what you do is that this tree, you would have to look for it and plant around your gate, maybe in between the, where you are going to pass through. I am talking about in those days that people can be attacked without any provocation. So this one is significant because it serves uh, as something that any time something happened to a big man, you don't need to take his bodyguards through any initiation. So it was proposed that Nkrumah would have passed through this particular place. You see there's one here, there's one there. So this was supposed to be entrance. So they planted these two trees so that if you are coming in, whether bad spirit or maybe a man is coming in to attack, then you come in, honestly, whatever should happen, should happen. Chief of Nathan Dury, Nabad David Kansuk Na Golbila says the conflict that gave the place a bad name is over and invited investors to sink their money in Bumoba land. They say they call them, but we think we should be called Nakonis Cup. Because the highest point of the, the scalp is at Nakonis. Not far from where in Kuma put his guest house. And in fact, at another place, there was uh, where we placed the flag of Ghana. That is the highest point of the Nakonis Cup. We put uh, the flag there, but we don't want to be able to do. So I would say that. We are thinking of putting a power garden uh, facility there. You can see that from the scap down to Pupua and beyond to Boku, the land is flat. There's no obstruction. So if we, if we can divide the place into a power garden point, oh, wonderful, to be terribly fantastic. You can start from there to Boku. You can start from there to Pisga. You can start from there to any point in Upper East. The rocky terrain straddling the yet to be gazetted northeast region and the upper east region could be turned into a sightseeing arena once motorable rules and hotels are in place to make a safari most congenial for travelers. Napoleon Atukitu, Nakpanduri.